Good morning. This is Morning Coffee with Jesus. Um, I have my husband Jason with me again this week because we're going to finish our series on you reap what you sow. So go ahead, get your coffee, get your Bible because we are getting into the Word. Amen. Welcome back. So last week we were talking about you reap what you sow. And we were saying how people normally use this term in a negative sense. Right. And we're trying to get you guys into looking at it from the Word of God and how reaping what you sow is supposed to be a good thing, not right. a bad thing. And so I want to take our time, um, kind of go over a little bit what we talked about last week and then where we're going to get into um, this morning. So last week... We were going over so many different things and we were <laughs> there was many different directions that we could have taken um but we ended up kind of laying the foundation right. and showing people why we sow and how we're able to reap but this morning i want to show you guys a little bit on the quality of our seed and how important that is and i know the lord's been laying some things on your heart great so I want to start in Genesis 4, 2, and this is talking about Cain and Abel. So this is the first offering um, that has taken place um, at the beginning of time, basically. Sure. So in verse 2 it says, Then she bore again, this time, his brother Abel. And now Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering. But he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry, and why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, Will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. And its desire is for you, but you shall rule over it. Now Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose against Abel his brother and killed him. So here there's two different offerings being presented to, to the Lord. And a lot of times people look at this and they're like, Well, I don't understand why, you know, he didn't honor his gift. He brought him what he was asking for. But you really have to look at the verse and everything that's, that's in it. So when it's talking about Abel, Abel brought out of his abundance. He brought something that was very precious and very dear. He brought the firstborn. I mean, that was the best quality that there was. And he gave him the first the very best and Cain when he brought his offering to the Lord it wasn't the best it wasn't his first it was kind of his leftovers sure. what what he had and we all know that it or if you're a farmer you you know that when you're bringing in stuff you set aside different um, piles, I guess you could say. So you have the one that you're going to give back to the stores that you're making your money from. Mm -hmm. You've got all these other ones, and then you have the stuff that you leave back for yourself. Well, majority of the time, the stuff they leave back for themselves is the lesser mm -hmm. um, in value because they want to give their best quality to be sold because right. they know if they're producing good stuff, then more people are going to buy from them. Right. Well, when we're giving to the Lord, we are supposed to be giving that that best, that first, that quality seed. Right. And then in turn, that's what kind of harvest you're going to reap back. Because, um, who was I think it was Keith Moore that was talking about this. He was saying how um, the farmers do, like they lay out their piles, but they also have the seed that they're going to sow next time. Right. Well, they need that to be a good seed sure. so they can produce those same type of harvest again and again and again. And if we're more concerned about, well, I got to take care of me and my family first, and then whatever's left over, we'll sell, or whatever's left over, we'll give to God. 
you're gonna run out faster than you can even realize because your heart's not right. Your quality is wrong. And when we all know that if someone gives you a gift, because we just had Christmas not too long ago, and if someone gets you a gift because they feel obligated to, most of the time, it's something real quick, easy, gift card, money, uh, here, I'm done with you, check you off my list. If you give people money, I'm not putting you down. People like or money. Gift cards. Right. People like people it. People like it. But what I'm saying is, if someone actually takes time and really thinks about you mm-hmm. individually and personalizes something or handcrafts something specifically for you, man, you appreciate that so much more because of the effort, of the time, of everything that was put into it. Right. And you're just like, oh my gosh, this is so unique. I mean, you really thought about me. And it's just so beautiful. And the person who gave it to you is super excited because they know how excited you're going to be. Well, when we're bringing and presenting our gifts to God, we're excited about that. And he's excited because he knows what comes along with us sowing that seed. He knows what the benefits that we're going to be reaping in return, that harvest that we're going to get. So my question to you guys this morning is what type of quality are you putting forth when it comes to sowing your seed? Now, this can be sowing your seed for financial uh, prosperity, for health. Um, for, I don't know, maybe you guys are believing for a certain building or a particular thing or an automobile, whatever it is, what are you sowing to reap that harvest? Because we all know that when we're sowing a seed, it produces after its own kind. Right. So if we're sowing a certain type of seed and we're expecting a different harvest, we know that's not going to work. Just like we were talking about last week and the weeds and everything um, that we're planting is going to produce what we planted in the ground. Absolutely. So we can't be upset or expect something else to produce when that's not what we've been planting. So know what we're planting, know what we're believing for, first off, Especially like in the new year, I think it gets people excited. They feel like fresh new start. All right, let's write our goals down. Let's let's run. Let's do this, and they'll write down some crazy stuff. Oh sure. Because it sounds good. Yep. But then when you actually start putting it to to work, you're like, oh man, why did I write that down? I don't even want to do this mm-hmm. anymore. And then you give up, and then it gets you discouraged, and then it makes you feel like you can't accomplish what you set out to do. Right. Well, we have to make realistic goals here Mm -hmm. you can't say I'm gonna be a millionaire this year that's great but (laughs) what would you do with a million dollars you gotta have that million dollar plan you gotta know I mean there has to be structure behind Mm -hmm. what you're doing you can't just say I want to do this and there's no reason why it's just cuz you want to do it you want to have it (laughs) you're gonna store it up and store up earthly treasures or you're gonna go about doing God's goodwill right Absolutely, yeah. So, like I said, I want you guys to first go ahead and decide, Lord, what is it that I need to be sowing a seed in? And then when you figure that out, then you get the quality and you're going to put him first place. Because again, like I said, if we're not putting him first, then it kind of messes the order up of everything. Right. We can get to the place to where we pay... The electric, we pay the rent, we pay this, we pay that. And then after everything else is paid, then we pay our tithes. Yep. Then we give our offerings because we've got it left over. Well, that's like us doing just like Cain did. Mm-hmm. Bringing the leftovers mm-hmm. instead of saying, no, I'm going to put God first. We get that tithe together. We sit down with our spouse. We, we get there and we look at our seed And we say, this is what we're believing for. And then we release it. And when we sow that, we're expecting it to come back in abundance. So, I want to back up to something that you said a few minutes ago. Where you you first started talking about the quality Mm -hmm. of the seed. Um, We should think about the quality of our seed like the vision that we have for the quality of our life right right um you're not going to want a a 
just a terrible quality of life where you're struggling. Right, where no, you don't no one have wants the that. Things that you want, you know, right? So we should be thinking about the seed that we're sowing in that same manner. Right. And so the one thing that I've been talking about and or I've been reading about is uh, on the quality aspect is the quality that God has for mm -hmm. us. And so I want to go to John 10.10. 10. Okay. But I'm going to read it out of the Amplified um, Classic Version. It says, The thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. Make sure that we say it in that order, right? Because he comes to steal the first. Word of God. Yeah. That's the first thing that he's coming to do. Mm -hmm. He's not just coming to kill everybody right. that he sees or is in his path. He wants to steal the Word of God from each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. Because then it's so much easier for him to... To right, he's de-arming you. Absolutely. He's taking away what we have to be able to fight against him with. That's exactly right. Um, and then destroy, right? And mm -hmm. that's just to destroy relationships and destroy everything around you and around your life and in your life. Yeah. Um, then he says, I came that they may have and enjoy life. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not just have life, enjoy. but enjoy it. When you, when you have a... Um, the best quality of life that you're living, you're going to enjoy that. Right. Right? So I <clears throat> have come that they may have and enjoy life. And then he says, and have it in abundance mm -hmm. to the full until it overflows. Yeah. That is a quality of life. Just like when we bring our seeds and we're sowing our seeds, that's the kind of quality seed that we need to yeah. be sowing. And it should be without question, right? Because we know that his word says he has come that we might have that abundance. Not just have life, but enjoy it. Yeah. In abundance. Mm -hmm. To the full. Overflow. Till it overflows. <laughs> which means that not just whenever it gets full, that's when the quality stops. And right. that's whenever he thinks, oh man, you know, that's, they're good. They're, they're full. Right? No, that's not what he's saying. He's saying until it overflows. Mm -hmm. And so... I also want to go quickly to uh, Matthew 6, 33. It says, but seek, and I'm reading this also out of the Amplified, yeah. but seek, aim at, and strive after. Meaning, when you seek something. Mm -hmm. On purpose. On purpose. Yeah. You're intentionally, that's what it's saying. When you're aiming at it, you're intentionally trying to hit it, right? Mm -hmm. If you're shooting a bow and arrow, if you're you know, yeah. shooting a target, you want to hit the center. You don't want to hit on the outside rings or, you know, you don't right. want to be all over the place. You you have this light, this sight in your line of vision, and that's what you're seeking. Mm -hmm. or, but seek, aim at, and strive after, first, all of his kingdom. And so I want to make sure that we're understanding that you're seeking him, mm -hmm. his kingdom, mm -hmm. not the Babylonian system, <laughs> not the world. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And his righteousness, right? In right standing with right. him. Right. Which in parentheses here in the in the in the uh, amplified classic it says, which it's another way of saying his way of doing and being right. Right. That's what you're aiming after, right? You're aiming after you're seeking the kingdom of God mm -hmm. and his way of doing and being right. Amen. Right. Right. And then. It says, all these things taken together will be given to you. Now I want to flip over. So we know that, again, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, his, his way of doing and being right, and all these things will be added to you. And then verse 34 says, therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Mm hmm See, when we sow a seed, this is what we talked about last week, yep. when we sow a seed, we don't sow it because we need a harvest. We sow it because we expect one. Right. When we, you talked about it a second ago, if, you, if your heart's not right, then the quality of your seed is not going to be the, the highest and best right. quality. If you're in a position where it's like I'm gonna sow this because I need this harvest, I need to, to I need to reap this harvest. Yeah. And if you're thinking in that mindset, then you're not gonna even think about the quality of your seed. It's gonna be a reactionary, 
sowing mm -hmm. and then expecting a reaping. Right. Right? <clears throat> and so when it says do not worry about tomorrow. Yeah. That's not well, that's not why we're sowing. We're not sowing because, man, I have to do this so that tomorrow yeah. I'm taken care of. <laughs> right? That's an obligation. Right. Right? That's an obligation. That's like doing it as a payment. Absolutely. Saying, I'm giving you this so you'll give me this. Absolutely. And it's not supposed to be a type of, I'm, I'm working for this, I'm giving you this money, so now I deserve this. Right. Because... None of us deserve anything that God has already done for us and is going to do for us. So when we understand that there is no payment that we can make That's right. to receive what it is that we're, we're asking for, He does that because He loves us. Because He wants to give us that gift freely. Absolutely. That is where you get into the grace and mercy Absolutely. that is tied to sowing and reaping. Mm -hmm. There is so much grace in sowing and reaping. Let's go really quickly to John chapter 4. Well, before we go there, can I, I want to read one more. Go ahead. Because um, we were just talking about seeking first the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And it's important that we understand what the kingdom of God is. Absolutely. And the word tells us that in Romans 14, 17, it says, For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and Absolutely. peace and joy yes. in the Holy Spirit. Amen. So it's not about natural, what I'm going to eat, what I'm going to wear, what I'm going to, you know, all that. Mm -hmm. The kingdom of God here is the righteousness, which you were just talking about, right standing, mm -hmm. his way of doing things, and peace and joy. Who doesn't want peace and joy? Oh, right. Man, I'm telling you. Um, I was just literally preaching on this last night, and how um, the way we get into this kingdom of God <coughs> is by being filled up with him. Right. And we do that by having that relationship with Him. That's right. By putting Him first place in everything that we do. And by doing that, He just like pours His self on us. Yeah. And it comes alive on the inside of us. Right. And then in turn, it is overflowing. And so it's coming out to other people that we're in contact with. That's awesome. Because that's what's on the inside of us. So, of course, if that's what's on the inside of us, that's what's going to come out of us. Right. Think about this. Like, I literally just got this image. When you cut yourself, what happens? You bleed. You bleed, right? We all know blood's coming out. Right. Okay? I don't care who you are, what race you are, what uh, way you talk, where you live. I don't care. Blood is going to come out of every human. Right. Why? Because that is what's on the inside of you. Mm -hmm. Blood is your life source. Right. Without blood, you can't live. Right. Well, when we're looking at it from a kingdom of God aspect, He's on the inside of us when we ask Him into our life. And what happens? When we open our mouth, it's like, you know, that blood that was naturally going to come out of you because right. that's what's on the inside of you. Well, faith's going to be coming out of you. Right. You're constantly going to be sowing and planting and being blessed in return. Right. Because that's the overflow Absolutely. that's going to come out. There, There's no other option. Right. That's all that's in there. Yep. And when you get to that place, that eliminates you even thinking about taking or sowing or doing anything other than your absolute best. Right, exactly. Right. You want to. Absolutely. You're because, excited. Because you know what you know what the law says. You know what the word yep. says. Okay, can we go to Yes, John? let's do it. Alright, John chapter four. Um, let's read verse thirty seven. For in this saying in this the saying is true. One sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you have not labored. Mm-hmm. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labors. Yeah, that that, that yeah. is, uh, I've got one right there. That is the absolute definition of grace. He has sent us to reap that which we have not even labored. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. Now, in, in order for you to live that mm -hmm. life, and to experience that grace, 
you got to believe that. I mean, yeah, of course. You absolutely have to exercise your faith, mm -hmm. right? I think this is the last scripture that, I'm, that we're going to go to. Okay. 2 Corinthians 4. We're still talking about the grace and the mercy that is attached to the sowing and the reaping. And the grace of God. Amen? Amen. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 18. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Mm -hmm. That is the absolute definition of living by faith. Right. I'm not looking at the natural situation that's here in front of me. I'm going to sow my absolute very best seed regardless yeah. of the situation that is going on around me. Why? Because I know that His grace has already said in John 4 that He has called me to reap into harvest that I didn't even labor in. Mm -hmm. and that's so good. Amen? <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Now, what happens is, is what happens is we get so tied up into the pressures of, of this world. We get so tied up into these deadlines that, that people set for us on our jobs. Mm, yeah. And even just the expectation. That we set for ourselves, too. Yeah, right. The expectation of I've got to get this done now yeah. in order to not let somebody else down, mm -hmm. right? Or slow them down. Or we, we get tied up into that. And, and that's deception. Right? Um, we're being deceived at that point. Yeah. We have to know that we're not looking at the situation that's going on around us. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we know he's called us to reap a harvest over something that we haven't even labored for. Right. And we know that because, again, we're sowing our best seeds and everything. We're going about, we're doing good. That's that nourishment we talked about last week. Yeah. When the disciples asked Jesus, hey, you've been with these people all day long. Let's push all them back. Let's go here. Let's, you know, get away from everyone. And let's get something to eat. Yeah. Right? And in reality, they were hungry. Of course, yeah. That was the deal. They were hungry. They're natural people. Right. And that's when Jesus responded to them, the nourishment I have, you don't know of yet. Mm -hmm. Right? And what he was saying is, is that you're getting that fulfillment in going about doing good. You're getting yeah. that fulfillment in walking a life of we walk by faith and not by sight. Mm -hmm. You're getting that fulfillment of sowing that best quality seed into every person that you come across. Yeah. Every person that Jesus came across, he, he planted the best quality seed possible. Yeah. Not so that he could reap a harvest from it, because he already knew. The harvest was is they were going to follow him. The harvest mm -hmm. was is they were going to seek his father. Instead of the natural earthly fathers. Well, and two, even though he went and he was sowing what he had mm -hmm. to people he was coming in contact with, we talked about last week too about um, the type of ground that we're sowing right. in, how there's good ground and not so good ground. Mm -hmm. Well, there was a lot of people that he would minister to that didn't receive from him, that didn't receive their healings. Why? Because they weren't receiving what he was giving. Right. Well, it's just like if you plant a seed in an environment that's not good. Maybe there's no sunlight. Maybe there's, you know, weeds or maybe there are thorns or rocks or whatever it is that would cause a seed not to produce. And you think, oh, well, I'm going to plant this in faith and it's going to grow. And right. so you do that. But God never told you to plant it there. That's right. So you're already out of the will of God. You're not doing what he told you to do. You're just doing it because you think, yep. I've got faith. Absolutely. Well, we also have to listen to the Holy Spirit and mm -hmm. find out, is this where I'm supposed to do this? Mm -hmm. And another thing that's important is sometimes we may be in the right location, but we also have to do it at the right time. Right. Because... We all know if you try and plant something in the wrong season, absolutely, it's not going to grow. That's right. Not because it doesn't have the potential, right? Because this the 
environment and everything that that seed needs to be able to grow and live the the cold or the heat whatever it is i don't know what y'all are trying to grow but yeah <laughs> it will affect that seed and it can actually prevent it from growing you know at all or a lot right so we have to make sure we're in the right place and at the right time mm -hmm. so we have to be in tune with the holy spirit listening to what he's telling us and when he's telling us to do it That's just great. like i think it was last week that we were talking about too um about how you know you have to do it when he says to reap because the disciples at one point were like no it's not that time to yeah. reap in the harvest and he's like yeah, i'm up. telling yeah. you it is go and get it the fields are white now if he yeah. says that it's time to go get the harvest go get that harvest and to go get it <laughs> do not wait and say Lord, do you know yeah. how this works? Yeah, yeah he does. Yeah. He's the one that put it into place. Don't argue with the Father. That's Say, right. yes, sir, where do I need to be and when do I need to be there? That's right. I mean, you go with bells on, right? <laughs> Amen. And it's awesome you're talking about, about timing first. I want to back up and, and recapture what, mm -hmm. what you said the kingdom of God is. is It's righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And so that's God's kingdom. Mm-hmm righteousness joy and peace in the Holy Ghost in order to operate in that kingdom we've got to do what we were just talking about we've got to walk by faith yeah and not by sight because mm -hmm. if you're looking at what's going on around you it's going to be difficult to to be in right standing it's going to be difficult to to have joy yeah it's going to be almost impossible to have peace Mm -hmm. Amen. And so that kind of faith, and this is what I wrote down, that kind of faith believes that even when I don't or can't see it immediately, that I trust his word, that I trust mm -hmm. his word, that I trust his timing. Right. His timing, not my timing, not your timing, yep. not your timing. It requires patience. Huh? It's his Ooh. timing. <laughs> So there's so much that we could continue talking on, right. but for sake of time, we are going to continue this session next week. So come back and join us. You do not want to miss the rest of what God is telling us. Three week mini series. Hey, you know, whatever God wants to do, <laughs> that's the direction we're going to flow. So thank you guys. And we'll see you next week.